Hello everyone, this is Phil. I'm not on the server. I'm in single player in my creative world where I mess around. Uh, and I have built... It looks somewhat complicated. It is a completely vertical piston elevator. I don't think anyone's built any of these before. And after building one I can see why. Um, it's very impractical and slow. It lags your game a lot. Uh, hopefully the recording's going to be alright. I've put the graphic settings down a bit and I'm running smoothly from now but this was more just a proof of concept to see if it was actually possible I think lots of people have been wondering if it is and it is we will see it when I say slow I mean it takes like seven minutes for it to fully retract back to where it is now so it all starts with this button uh, it's got a long delay on it so I can actually get on here it There you go, puts you up to the top. Uh, I'm going to speed the video up here because it takes a very long time to sort of fall its way back down, so enjoy that. So there you go, it took a while but eventually it's gone all the way down and then you can press it, go back up again so it's completely resettable although it's still going because, whoa that's loud it's still going because I designed it a bit badly now I'm going to attempt to explain how this works I should warn you, this is a lot of redstone if you've never done redstone before this might not make any sense if you have done redstone before, same thing But press the start button and all this does is it goes up this trail of wire and each one just activates a piston so they just go up all the way to the top so that's simple enough uh, the problem with going back down is that while one piston can push 12 blocks in front of it it can only pull one back down so you can't just like run the wire in reverse if you see what I mean Ooh and I've just broken a bit of wire here so it doesn't actually start going down but uh, over here so to make it go down what we do is I'm going to explain this with words, it's not going to work if this piston goes up and down it'll grab the first one and then this one goes up and then that one goes up uh, so it goes one step, two step, then this one We'll need to pull that one down, and then this one will pull one above it down, and then one above it down, and that just goes on and on. And like each piston you go down, it needs to pull one more block. Um, I've labelled all the pistons from one, well, up to 26. Although there's only 13 pistons, but there's 26 different inputs, like because each piston takes up two gaps when it's fully extended, so to have complete control we need double that, so 26. On the screen you'll see the order in which you need to activate the pistons. As you can see it starts off with an even number and goes down by two and each time you need to do an extra, we'll call it an operation, just a piston going up and down. So we need to somehow do these 78 operations, that's how many times you would need to press a button if you were doing it manually but we need to make that automatic so that's what this horrible thing over here is for um, it might be called a piston array uh, it's a somewhat convoluted one, it's enormous right so this is a clock, it's a very long clock that goes through to here this is a pulse shortener so hang on because I broke the wire, it didn't actually turn on, so I need to do this again. Prepare for pistons. Come on. Yeah, so here's a clock, this is constantly on, and when we press the on button, this extends so the power goes through here into this pulse shortener. 
uh, this pole shortener goes up here and then it takes a very long journey Whoop. so it will push it'll activate these pistons which push the blocks up it then makes its way up to the next line of pistons and then the blocks just get cycled round in this enormous array uh, it's, I only need 78 pieces of wool but I think there's like 90 pieces of glass so there's this big blank area where nothing actually happens so we've got all these blocks cycling round randomly uh, if you were to count you would see that there are 24 in, uh, individual lines or pistons on each bit I suppose and each one of those corresponds to one of these inputs we don't actually need to use 26, 25, or 1. Uh, can't really explain that, but you can just see if there's a piston here, then we only need to use this one. And because this one's already at the bottom, we don't need to use 1. So, we've got 24 things cycling around. Now, <laughs> we'll go back to the pulse shortener, uh, this just sends out a quick pulse because the pistons sort of need to go up and then back down fairly soon so that blocks can then be pushed back into the space um, yeah so that goes up here and then it sends another pulse slightly later uh, through this particular bit, it doesn't have to be anywhere special, you just need to like take some data out of one point on this ridiculous cycle and if you look at where there is wool, when the pulse goes, as you can see, it goes off to a respective piston. This is because when you send a pulse, it will not go through glass. Glass doesn't count as a solid block, but wool does. So here we've got like 24 different outputs. Uh, this mess here it's just getting one output over to one piston so hopefully you can see how this works now what we do is we take the grid from earlier uh, we go down here we think well the first piston is 24 so we would replace this glass with the wool then we would press the button to make it cycle once manually then the next one's 22 then make it cycle again 23 and do that for all 78 different things and then this, yeah, the piston elevator will slowly go down uh, this little bit of wire here is quite important uh, the start button is just down there that goes boop, 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 boop. and this is an RS0 latch uh, hopefully you know what one of those is basically one input will turn it on and then another input will turn it back off later so when you press the button that will turn it on in this instance and because we don't when the elevator is completely retracted downwards we don't want this to just keep going on and on forever we want it to stop itself so these two gold blocks are uh, all fast forward in time to when they're over here actually while we're waiting for those to get over there as you can see it takes a long time because it's becoming night um, so I give you a big overview so you can see everything cycling around Although the game can't quite render it because it's a lot of blocks to update. So, in order to turn it off, uh, what I've done is I've put two blocks next to each other because in every other row there's only going to be one wall block. And so, those two inputs, uh, they go off to their pistons, but also they branch off into this, which is just an AND gate. Uh, what that means is this will only turn on if it is receiving power from both of these. That's what an AND gate is. And then that comes down here, that hits the other side of the RS0 latch, and so it will turn the whole thing off. And uh, we're going to see that in a moment. Um, I could have, like, stuck an extra piston on or an extra line of glass and then just add one wool block and then that would have just separately gone down to the original latch but I don't really want to do that uh, because 
the wiring goes right up to the glass in places. I've already spent a long time on this. Can't really be bothered to do much more on it. And it's nice to try and keep it um, compact, shall we say. Anyway, here we go. So, torch goes on. You probably didn't see it, but the state of the art and all that has now been changed. So this wall is no longer there, so no power is going through, and the whole thing has stopped. And finally, the elevator is ready to be pressed again. Uh, hopefully I don't glitch through the pistons this time. Never mind. Not sure why that happens. Uh, so there you go. 100% uh, vertical piston elevator, and by that I just mean it's just a line of pistons vertically. Uh, hopefully this is this is the first one. It would be nice if it is, but hope you enjoyed.